Okay, in this video, we're going to go over the new snap uh, features uh, for imported meshes. So whether it's STL, OBJ, whatever, you now have the ability to snap to vertices and center of the faces, which comes in super handy if you want to add to add to an existing model, do some hard surfacing inside plasticity, and then send it back over to something like ZBrush. This uh, skull here I did in ZBrush many years ago. And uh, so I imported it into plasticity and started playing with it. And nothing, nothing final here. <laughs> I'm just playing for right now. But you can actually rebuild this whole skull inside plasticity. And let me show you the kind of workflow to do it. So it's just a matter of import append into your scene, grab an OBJ STL. Now this particular object is actually a quad remeshed object. So it's got uh, quads, even though it looks like a triangulated when it imported. Uh, downside to this, uh, you cannot see the wireframe of your model when they come in. So maybe someday they'll implement that feature. But for the time being, you just have to kind of rely on the shading to kind of tell you where the vertices are, as well as the snaps. So as you can see here, I did um, just some quick panels on here to show you that I can extrude out. And I'll just kind of show you that method real quick. So I've got, uh, I'm just going to do a spline curve here. I got to set up to shift Z. And if you notice right away, it's grabbing onto a vertex. Super handy. And it'll also grab into the center. Of, it'll lock onto the center of the face. At least it should, but it's not. But vertices is what I want anyways. So using the curve command, I'm just going to just put vertexes on all or put uh, CVs on all of these. Right click to, now you can see it perfectly conforms to it. I'm going to do just a couple more here. Okay, Shift-Z, we'll just make a little patch here that we can extrude out and then do whatever we want with. There we go, they're all nice and lined up there, so let's go ahead and just hit all these curves. Okay, I'm going to join them together, and then use the patch, I got it set up on the tilde key, alright. Now let's go ahead and escape out of that. And I'm going to thicken it. I got it set up to Shift T. And as you can see, I can pull that sucker out. And let's clean it up a bit. There we go. Round over the edges a little bit. Round over the top, or just chamfer it. Pretty cool. So you can do a bunch of things here. This is just kind of rudimentary and simple. But like I said, you can rebuild this whole skull inside plasticity if you wanted to, to take the time to draw out the vertices, patch, and then make it into one solid mesh. Now, cool thing about this, you can select any of your, uh, this is a new feature into 2024.2 that any of your imported mesh meshes you can change the opacity to it so I'm going to do 0.5 and then enter so it doesn't even need to have the render mode on it doesn't matter if you're using a matte cap or the render mode it will now make the mesh uh, 0.5 or 50 percent visible so this way you can see through it and it's easier to, you know, help you see around the object a little bit better. So we've been talking about organic stuff here. Well, you can also use the new snaps for CAD stuff. Let me turn these off. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so let's pull up some objects here couple different things here so I recently redid my 20 sided die and I wanted to bring it into plasticity I originally created in ZBrush uh, and I wanted 
I wanted a CAD workflow with it. So I needed to get this little uh, centerpiece and get in, into plasticity. So what I did was I imported the mesh and then I rebuilt it. So just doing the same method here, just shift Z. And if you run into problems of trying to lock onto something, you can do a shift X. It'll, it'll forget about that snapping point. So if you ever run into that, remember shift X. So now you can see I've got one part of my face here. And what I would do is I would go around all the way around and build that face up and then start extruding the mesh and then re totally rebuilt it. And that's how I was able to get my, my 20 sided die into plasticity. So I just had to get this, this shape and then the caps, uh, brought into plasticity. And then after that, I was able to add all the, all the numbers and everything like that. So another example is I needed to find, I needed to make a mod for my A1, my Bamboo Labs A1. And there was a camera mod that I could hook up to the X axis. And somebody had already done it, but they had designed it for their particular camera remote. Well, I needed to redesign it for mine. So I took their CAD file because I needed to get the interface just right so it would actually hook up. So it was just a matter of really drawing out all these little profiles here. So, and circles are kind of interesting. If you do three point circle in here, and then you use the same methodology, we just need to find a vertex, find a second vertex, and then just find a third vertex. And there you go. You got a perfect circle there that you can extrude and cut out of your mesh. And then it's just a matter of going through shift A, building up everything. I'll probably go to the end there. And see how I'm running into snapping problems, so just shift X. Sometimes I have to flip it around so I can find it. That's why uh, being able to see the wireframe would help me uh, line up my uh, line up my snap it a little bit better there. So, so really, yeah, that is basically your new snap command. Sorry, I'm not going to go through this whole thing with you. It took me a half hour or so to build this uh, mesh back up, but uh, handy new feature with the snap into imported objects. There's a lot of possibilities with this. So you're not limited to just plasticity. Now you can start bringing your organic stuff over. You can bring in your old CAD files over or old STL files and you can start rebuilding them. We'll catch you in the next video.